Hello, I'm alone in Finland. This is Eve Online. We are doing sketchy runs at the moment. And as you can see by the term of the video, I wanted to talk about the game loop. And obviously it's me, so I'm talking about the disconnect in the game loop uh, from what it should be, in my opinion, to what it actually is. Now, this doesn't go for everybody, but this is something that I see a lot, an awful lot. And to explain what happened, somebody made a comment that sort of triggered my brain. That's not the right term. I don't mean like in the angry sense of, <laughs> I'm triggered and I don't like that. I mean sort of, I read this and then all of a sudden something clicked in my head and I was like, I have seen a lot of this. This is kind of part of what has been sort of, uh, how do you call it? Interesting me, curiositifying. Just in general, I don't understand it. So it's something that's weird. So I made a video before about the anatomy of a gate camp. And then because of somebody's comment saying you can't make money on this, I made another video about how they actually make money and generate it. And one of the comments in reply to that video had said, um, essentially that it, it wasn't an efficient way of making money and that wasn't the point of the video the point of the video was to show that it the you can make money it's not how efficient it was or anything like that but that was what sort of tweaked my brain because it was like that's what i'm seeing this is what i'm seeing a lot of both in my comments and then stuff that i'm reading on reddit which i'm trying to come off of because jesus that's a toxic place but that's the thing that sort of trips me up. Because if you think about this in the context of any other game that I am aware of, how many players talk about the game when it comes to how much they can make in the game as opposed to how much fun they are having or how they enjoy the game? Because that's normally your metric of a game. I enjoy this game, so I play this game as opposed to Oh no, I have to put in this amount of time to make this money, but I only have this amount of time, so I need to make it as efficiently as possible. And I can understand the sort of argument around about, oh well, I need to plex my account for free. I can't put money into it, so I'm gonna grind all this time. But at the same time, a lot of people that are making those comments are talking about it in a way of, when they're talking about the grind that they're actually putting into this, they're talking like 10 15 20 hours and for me i just don't understand why you would do that because if you're going to spend 20 hours grinding to plex your account for a month as opposed to an hour to two hours working for the same amount of money to plex your account for that month then why wouldn't you do it that way why would you spend so much extra time? Now, I can understand not everybody has the same amount of money. They don't have the amount of money to be able to spend on things. But that's 20 hours instead of two. There are various different things you could do to make that kind of money in the real world instead of, instead of grinding at something you dislike in a game to play the bits that you do like. Uh, so that's something that's kind of just been sat uneasy with me because that's a lot of the conversation and I realized that that's some of the conversation that I'm seeing where people are saying this just doesn't make sense the the players attitudes don't make sense now again this isn't a, this isn't all of the players in Eve and I don't know how many players this is but I do know that this is something that I see enough that it makes me uncomfortable as an Eve player because I'm sat there going this is the, the thing that you see a lot of, so that's the thing that newer players see a lot of, especially because this is most predominant on our forums. So if you go and search for something, you will see these responses. Now I've had maybe 15 different replies that have talked about the same sort of thing on the forums, um, both on the forums and on uh, Reddit. And then I've had it in my comments an awful lot. So this is a, a mentality of people that are making these comments. So it is something that's going out there. Um, and for me, it's just weird having that mentality of why, like, of I need to play the game to be able to play the game, um, as opposed to I want to play a game that I enjoy. Uh, now, I play various different games. I'm not, I'm a gamer in general. So 
There isn't. I'm not a big person for playing my Morph Pigas. Uh, Eve Online is the only massive multiplayer that I play. But um, I play a lot of different styles of games. Uh, a lot of different things, sort of, um, are of interest to me. I really. I was brought up sort of in Counter Strike um, when Half Life came out. Counter Strike was a mod for Half Life originally before it became its own thing. And I was there from the beginning of the mod. There's another mod called Day of Defeat, which okay. I wish they would do a better, like a newer version of, because Day of Defeat was um, Counter Strike, but sort of slower, not slower paced, but World War Two and a lot better, in my opinion. And I really enjoyed both of those games side by side. Um, single player wise, I love story games. I love going through stories for games, especially like weirdly enough, Call of Duty. Uh, I absolutely the first Call of Duty Modern Warfare game i thought was just a work of art when it comes to games especially if you don't know it there's the nuclear death scene in it that just it's fantastic it was a magical point in gaming uh, and i enjoy games for that as well so i play through all sorts of different styles and there's not one style that sort of sits for me as a gamer um, but eve is the only thing where you see this sort of no you have to play it to be able to play it you have to do this you have to generate this money and it's all that sort of weird cultural mindset that exists today and when i say weird cultural mindset i'm not talking about inside eve i'm talking about outside eve i see so many videos about oh you have to have this gig mentality you have to have these side hustles you have to do all of this extra stuff to make all of this money and i know a couple of people that do this where i live and um, some of them do it because they have to because they're they're um refugees that have come across to finland and they are trying to make ends meet while they are while they are training and, and studying. The money in Finland for refugees is not much at all. It's, for instance, it's a little bit higher than they would get in Britain, but the cost of living is nearly twice what it is in Britain. So it's um, it's a lot less money for what you actually need to spend. Um, but all of these refugees that I know, every one of them, has these side hustles and side gigs. Um, and at the moment they just sort of work to be able to live at the same time they're studying to get qualifications to go into stuff um, professionally and these guys are all highly skilled if you have a bad um, a bad opinion of refugees or migrants or stuff like that Jesus go and talk to one you would not believe some of the stuff uh, one of the guys that I know got a job in a garage just sweeping up and tidying up the place and after a couple of weeks he had asked the garage owner if he could bring in his car and just um, put it up on the rack in the evening do a couple of things to it after he had finished work and the garage owner was nice enough to say yeah not a problem I'll stay here and sort of supervise what you're doing um, but you can do it if it's no longer than like an hour and your man brings in his car and he needs to weld the door so he gets the welding gear out and the, the, the owner of the garage is just not saying a word He's just sort of letting this happen. He's going to step in if something bad happens. And he's kind of expecting it. I'd spoken to the, the guy and he was saying this. And as it turned out, uh, the your man who has no qualifications, but is well educated in general, he speaks multiple languages, both like multiple European as well as North African. Uh, and it turns out he's a master welder. And the guy, like the, the owner, watched what he did to his own car and then went, right we are going to have you doing some different work and basically put this lad on night shift sort of eat late evening shift when the garage is normally shut to do a whole load of the extra welding because he's better than any of the educated guys from Finland from the local area so quite funny in general but these guys do this sort of side hustling in general because they have to whereas a lot of it that you see um, is more sort of focused on the you need to generate money but it's at expense of the life and this is what i'm sort of seeing in the game people are talking about playing like spending 20 30 hours in the game to get omega so that they can play the game like for free but that's the kicker it's not for free it's just that they're not valuing their own time so it's better to spend the actual money and to have that and now this also comes into plex in general um a lot of people have a dislike of Plex for, for actual like buying it with real world money, selling it in game and then using that to buy something shiny. And the funny thing about EVE is that it isn't pay to win because no matter what you do there could always be a bigger fish and in general because people that 
buy a lot of Plex tend to be people that are not that don't play in big corporations or have that in-game revenue excuse me in-game revenue generation that, that the sort of more interactive players have um, it does give them the ability to spend a bit of money to get something shiny and it feeds back into the economy because when that gets destroyed there's loot and all of that sort of thing and I have no problem with somebody who does that who has like two hours a, a week to play the game and they want to fly something shiny so they spend like 40 quid to get uh, 5 billion-esque to fit up something nice and shiny and then they run missions or they mine or whatever I don't have a problem with that because again it's it's something that if you can do it and you have the ability to do that why not because it's something that you enjoy you're paying for something that you enjoy and it's not really affecting anybody else um, there are stages where it does become affecting where you have people putting in tens of thousands of pounds that can sort of shift the actual economy of EVE in certain ways by like for instance buying up all of the, the Mordor's Legion blueprints something that happened fairly recently where the, the price of them went up on the contracts because somebody grabbed them all and I had a couple up for sale at the time and I noticed that all of mine were going to the same person um, so when I put mine up, I put them up at a higher rate and they all straight away, they had all gone up. So there is manipulation of that. Now I'm not saying that that person bought ISK to do that because there are people with that amount of ISK in game, but it is something that could affect. I'm just jumping about here in my chair because I'm uncomfortable. Um, oh, oh, I just realised how bad an idea I was, I was about to take my stuff through the most dangerous section of EVE and hadn't realised I hadn't changed my autopilot to the high sec route. So we are just going to do a little jump back way which is a massive pain in my backside. But yeah, so that's something in general that is, I think is sort of disconnected and it's good for new players to sort of see that in general. Um, from a not a more accurate point of view but just a point of view of that is not how everybody thinks in the game and some of us actually play it for fun now getting into that I want to show something very specific or I would if I could find it here it is so this is Old Man Star for those of you that don't know Eve has a whole load of chronicles and stuff like this you have split into chronicle short stories and scientific articles they are all stories of varying length not full books but they are very interesting and they're all set within the Eve game universe not all of them around about spaceships some of them on planets and things like that and they are actually what got me really invested in Eve because I really enjoyed some of the stuff and as you can see here, some of, like Old Man Star is one that is just a little short story. Take you about five minutes to read it. Um, but it exists in game. What's mentioned in that, towards the end of that, is actually in the Old Man Star star system. And you can go and have a look at the, the specific gate that they talk about in this. Um, and it, for me, it, things like that, that happened in the early game, were really interesting and caused a whole lot for me caused a whole load of exploration before there was actual spawning exploration sites um, because you go around to, just to see in general um, I had originally done a, a weird low sec pilgrimage to the, the Eve gate to see what was going on I'm not sure if that still exists because of all of the stuff that's happened um, but I had gone around a lot of the systems in general which was quite a dangerous activity just because a, a lot of it was a null and things like that um, but I just wanted to see some of the stuff and I quite like all of the lore around about it um, and that was something that got me invested in general but it was something where I was just jumping gate to gate it wasn't something that was making money it was just something that was fun to do and to have a little explore and have a look around um, and I think that if you're sort of new at EVE and you're getting into EVE and you are that type of person that likes a good story and things like this then a lot of these are brilliant just fantastic um, catch of the day and ruthless are two of my favorites forsaken is fantastically brilliant um, and the ray of the matter is like it's all on planet I really enjoy this one as well uh, and has to be mentioned the Jovian wet grave is just uh, it's the whole pod 
lore, how the pods came about, and I think it's fantastic, it really is. Uh, so something to have a look at uh, in general is these little ones. The Chronicles are a lot shorter, but there is some brilliant stuff in there as well. And I think that's something that is a good thing to, in general, put out in front of uh, some evil people here. I'm just having to do the old cloaky warpiness. Uh, yeah, it's something that's good to, to have a look at as a new player, just to sort of see these sort of things. Um, and in general... It'll give you more of an appreciation for the actual world that was created as opposed to just the game systems and things like that. Um, then lastly on that subject, there's so much to do in EVE that it shouldn't be about the ESC. And I would advise anybody starting out to go and explore it all. Um, and especially with corporations, one of the things that is sort of overlooked... Why did that not jump when I told it to jump? I have no idea. One of the things that is overlooked when it comes to uh, like the gate campers or like the bigger groups is the fact that a multiplayer game is a community and when you find good corporations and you're chatting away, some of the corporations, especially at the lower end, that are just a grouping of people that aren't really working together, they're actually some of the most fun. Um, because you're not really doing it for access privileges, you're not doing it to be able to um, like to to share facilities or stations or stuff like that you're just doing it as a little group of mates um, that chat together while they're doing stuff and one of my favorite corps that I was in was actually a mission running corp but the way that we were set up we were all running missions we were in the same corporation but we we're all across the entire universe um, at the time I was actually out in null sex space and I was running Garista's missions while simultaneously we had a few court members that were in high sec and running missions there and it was just what I did for six months but you're on the sort of audio chat and chatting away and stuff like this so it's it's something to explore have a look at all the different things have a look at corporations and stuff like this you don't always need to give over um, your sort of external game stuff I do know that a lot of the big alliances require that but the smaller corps don't and it's just good to get into a community that you sort of know and trust in general um, and if there isn't any sort of access requirements for the corp and money isn't changing hands, there are plenty of corps that have a zero tax rate. Uh, so it's always a good thing. It's just a little group of people. Uh, remember that if a corp doesn't have a station, then they can't be war decked. So if they don't have structures, they can't be war decked. So you don't have to worry about that anymore because that was a big sort of negative. Uh, but you also have the advantage of having lower tax rates on things when you're actually selling and buying and stuff like that in general. So something to have a look at. Um, and then sort of a little bit of exploration of the lore, but in general I would I would sort of advise anybody that is sort of thinking about the grind to not pay for EVE, just value your own time and your own experience over it because it is fundamentally weird that you would want to spend 20 hours in a game just to be able to play that game for an hour. Uh, it's it's an oddity. I know there's going to be some um, discussion of that and again your thoughts, your feelings, all of that down in the comments. I'm more than happy and as you can see I, I sort of read and respond to most of the comments. I read all of the comments, I respond to most of them. Um, but it's just something that I think in general is is a little bit weird about the actual culture around about Eve and how it's shifted since the beginning. and. Um, it's, I think it's not just an Eve thing, I think it's an entire cultural thing in general, but it's quite evident in this game and then the downside of that is it's quite off-putting to other people because they sort of see that, oh my god, this person's got all of this, I will never have this without spending money, I'll go and play something else, sort of thing. And I don't think that's a, that's a good thing to put out, it's also not a good thing to sort of think as you're coming into the game. Um, so if you have somebody that sort of mentioned that, just sort of put this forward, just try and put, put my video forward if possible um, to, to show that it's not all of us that are like this, a lot of people are still in this for the actual fun of the game. Um, as you can see at the moment, my randomness today is just jumping about and moving some, uh, some building materials about. And then, because I'm talking on the thing, repeatedly screwing up my jumps. Uh, but I'm going through high sex, so it's not too big a problem, or at least it won't be until the next system, because system, I'm going through a demo. 
and everybody knows Udema is just such a nice, friendly place where no ships get repeatedly ganked. Um, but at the moment, I'm actually. How much have I got in here? 61 million in the main cargo hold, 890 in the secondary cargo hold. So I'm, I'm a good target if somebody catches me. Um, it is 10 to 12, so I've got 10 minutes before cluster shutdown. It's 10.50 in game, I'm two hours ahead. Um, so I just need to get through this a little bit. But yeah, one last thing on this, it's completely random and separate to this, and oh my god, that's a lot of pirates in the system. But one little funny thing that happened to me today, I just wanted to sort of <laughs> call it out because it was fantastic. It's not something that's ever happened before. Everybody knows about Jita scams and you always get everything in the chat that's linked, whether it's a, a hypernode that is just most of the things have been bought over by the person that's actually selling it, so your chances of winning are ridiculously low, but also they're, uh, they're making money regardless of whether they lose or not, which I consider a scam. Um, or you've got the contract scams where it looks like a good deal but actually they've kind of manipulated the market values and what you're getting is not what it looks like value wise. Um, there's lots of different scams. But what happened to me today was somebody said, oh I'll give you a hundred million if you, uh, you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I was looking at this going, this has to be a scam. So I go onto the guy's YouTube channel and I said, okay. I'll give you four subscriptions if you give me half a billion. And your man, it turns out, gave me half a billion. <laughs> so no style Fred. Um, yeah, I was kind of stunned at that. <laughs> he actually, um, they actually paid up before I subscribed. So he gave me the money first and then I subscribed. So a trusting person in Jita. I mean, Jesus, if that's not winning the lottery, seeing something like that, I don't know what is. Um, but yeah, I've never seen that before. I've never seen something that wasn't a scam. But I'm always willing to give something a, a, a laugh and a try, providing I'm not putting money up front. And yeah, so I made, <laughs> I made half a billion today just off of somebody being nice and wanting some subscriptions on his YouTube channel. So. There are some, some honest people out there, which is weird and unusual, but rock on, rock on. That was funny as hell. So, I hope that's not been too boring for people. Thanks for watching. Oh, we got naughties here. Bunya cat. I like that. Uh, if you could, if you like this, give us a like. If you uh, would leave a comment as well, likes, opinions, all of that jazz. Please do, it's always nice to see them, it's always nice to read your opinions. I'm not looking for comments just for up in a thing, it's like if you've got feedback or stuff like that in general. Um, again, I'm not, it'd be nice to make it, I'd like to get more viewers and stuff like that, but this isn't something that I'm ever going to make money off of, I'm not sort of subscribed to any of that stuff, um, because I just don't have the time for it. But, yes, likes, comments, all of that jazz if you would, if you want to, if you have something to say. Um, also, dislikes and things like that, it's good to know people's opinion on the things. If you're going to downvote, just drop us a comment so that I can see why. I am more than happy to read it, I don't get hostile or any of that stuff. Um, I just, I'm genuinely curious about people's opinions. So, thanks for watching. Bye!